I had just started my first art job after graduating from university, and somehow I landed in this blue chip art gallery in San Francisco. And on this particular day, the art preparators were busy getting ready for our next show. This was a large group exhibition that would continue throughout the summer. And when they got to the floor where my desk was situated, they started to hang this all gray canvas right across from me. I begged them not to do it, as I didn't want to stare at a gray, oddly shaped canvas for what would be close to three months. You see, when I was studying art history, we were talking about Rembrandt and Caravaggio, not Ellsworth Kelly. But living with this piece, staring at it every day, I began to get it. I started looking forward to seeing it every morning and would say goodbye to it like it was some sort of friend when I left the office at 6 p.m. So how did Ellsworth Kelly do that? How did he get to that point in his career where he could make monochromatic, oddly shaped canvases you wanted to become friends with? Let's talk about it. There's a good chance you've walked by an Ellsworth Kelly. They can be found in important museums across the world. You may have even been caught saying, my kid could do that. And that's understandable if you were to just give these a passing glance. But what happens if you slow down, if you spend a couple extra minutes with his work? You see, that's exactly what Ellsworth Kelly wanted you to do. I think my pictures need time. Time is very important with art. And to reach this point, he spent decades experimenting and refining his work. Kelly always knew he wanted to be an artist. He drew from the time he was young, and his teachers encouraged him to explore the arts. He would enroll at the famed Pratt Institute until he was drafted by the U.S. Army in 1943. It was the height of the Second World War, and it was all hands on deck to try and defeat Nazi Germany. He would serve with other artists and designers in an incredible unit, one that came to be called the Ghost Army. The unit used dummy tanks and fake aircraft to deceive Hitler's forces and mislead them as to the side and location of the Allied troops. His time in the military became part of his artistic training, and it would also introduce him to Paris. After the war, he would spend years in the French capital and immersed himself in the arts. He caught himself trying to emulate Picasso and realized quickly that is not what he wanted to do. Kelly didn't want to be like the other painters in Paris. He wanted to do something he hadn't seen before. He started looking at shadows and nature and began to reduce them to their most basic elements. He has seen things in fragments and was obsessed with the details. He wanted you to see things that had been around you your entire life, but had never noticed. During his time in Paris, he would only sell one painting and after an eviction would move back to New York. In the States, his work was viewed as radical. And remember the time frame here. It's the 1950s, and Kelly's work is often associated with minimalism, but minimalism wasn't widely recognized until the 60s and 70s. He would create brightly colored multi-panel canvases that challenged the viewer's conceptions of space. He made art that was making a break from expressionism, and he didn't want his personality in it. The space I was interested in was not the surface of the painting, but the space between you and the painting. His community consisted of artists like James Rosenquist and Agnes Martin. He would exhibit his work with artists like Jasper Johns, Frank Stella, and Robert Rauschenberg. He started experimenting with unconventionally shaped canvases, and he started making prints and sculpture. In 1970, he moved into a larger studio, which allowed him to complete larger and more ambitious projects. Here is Untitled from 1982 at the Dallas Museum of Art. And he was commissioned by the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. to make this installation. It consists of four white panels simply titled Memorial. In 2013, he would receive the ultimate honor when President Barack Obama would present Kelly with the National Medal of the Arts. So back to this gray panel. How did it turn me from skeptic to superfan? Well, like Kelly said, it took time. And remember, the space he was interested in was not the surface of the painting, but the space between you and the painting. 
The few inches off the wall Kelly places these paintings allow the shadows to morph and move as the day progresses. As the season changed from summer to fall, you didn't just see one gray, but multiple hues that range from dark and emotional to light and playful. It seems a little odd to say, but that painting became a companion, and its mood changed along with the daily rhythms of San Francisco. It was lively and exuberant during the day, and warm and comforting as the fog rolled in every afternoon. I've been fortunate to have a few pieces by Kelly pass through my life, like that gray painting which would run you well into six figures. And his prints can be equally as rewarding, and they can often be found for under $10,000. If you're a collector and his work interests you, feel free to reach out. I'll leave my contact information in the description below. And if you like this minimalist type of artwork, you might also like the work of Michael Heiser. I did a video on him and I'll put a link to it right here. As always, I really appreciate you watching. If you've made it this far, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It really makes a difference. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao.